Well, howdy folks, and welcome back to the Lamp Shop here in the foothills of the beautiful Beartooth Mountains in southwest Montana. Well, it appears that I opened a bit of a can of worms with my last video title, A Transition, Carriage Lamps to Coach Lamps. Now, the subject of what lamps might be appropriate on a particular carriage can become a pretty lengthy subject. Generally speaking, quality, size, finish, and just general tr tradition can make quite a conversation. But when you throw in personal taste, well now it can get a bit complicated. Now when I speak of carriage lamps, I'm generally talking about lamps that are appropriate on a spectrum of vehicles, as long as their quality, size, and finish are in line with that of the vehicle. But when I speak of a particular style of lamps, by the name of the vehicle that it goes with, it's because tradition dictates certain things about lamps for that type of vehicle. For example, hearse lamps are quite obviously hearse lamps. They are large and ornate and suitable for no kind of vehicle other than a hearse. Gig lamps are also something that are particularly designed for that particular type of vehicle. And that is also the case with road coach lamps. Road coach lamps were usually large in size and well built. They were heavy in appearance and heavy in weight. They were built to withstand constant tough use on long roads and long trips. They would have good light generation, reflection, and concentration capabilities. They would also be easy to maintain. The traditional designs of road coach lamps usually fell into the categories of large square lamps or large round cylindrical lamps such as the pair that I'm working on now. In consultation with my client, we came up with this pair of lamps to use as the frame for the lamps for their three-quarter size pony road coach. They're about the right size, five and three quarters in, in diameter in the barrel, which would correspond to about a nine inch diameter lamp on a full size road coach. Along with the modifications that I will be doing on these lamps, to make them traditional road coach style lamps. In this video, I'm dealing mainly with the tails of the lamps. I'm making them so that they thread on and off so that new candles can be loaded into these lamps while the lamps are still mounted on the coach. This is a picture of a road coach taken from the book Driving for Pleasure by Francis T. Underhill published in 1896 by D. Appleton and Company in New York. I'll start out by spinning new end caps for the new tails that I'll be building. I'll use the center knockouts from previously spun parts.
This one came out the right size, so I'll go ahead and spin up the rest of them. When I'm making a commonly replaced part like this, I usually make up some extras just to have on hand. I make the threaded parts to fit into the upper and lower tails. In this case, I'm using an inch and a half by 18 threads per inch tap and die set. I'll solder the newly made 
collars with the female threads into the upper portion of the tails. The male threads are a size and configuration that I use a lot of. And I usually make a pretty good sized batch of them. So I'll just take them out of stock. You can see a couple of them sitting on the bench here. The original lower portion of the tails have holes punched in them that someone put in there for electrical wires that they added at some point. They're also pretty rusty inside which will make it difficult to solder the threaded parts and the caps in. So I'll make new ones. In order to make the new tapered tails match the old ones in diameter at both the bottom and top, I'll use the old ones as a guide. It's a lot easier than doing the math. I think you can follow what I'm doing here.
Well, there we have the tails done. In the next video, I'll build new road coach style heads for these lamps. Tune in then to see what they actually come out to look like. In the meantime, stay well and as always, thanks for following along.